Whether it was the U-boats in the Atlantic or the great capital ships, such as Bismarck or Tirpitz in the North Atlantic, the Kriegsmarine had the ability, through its attacks on the all-important convoy system, to starve Britain into submission. However, of all the Axis forces of the period, the Kriegsmarine is perhaps the least known. Under the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, Germany was only allowed a minimal navy of 15,000 personnel, six capital ships of no more than 10,000 tons, six cruisers, 12 destroyers, 12 torpedo boats, and no submarines. However, even before the Nazi takeover, German naval rearmament had begun with the launching of the first pocket battleship, Deutschland, in 1931. When the Nazis came to power in 1933, Hitler soon began to ignore many of the treaty restrictions and accelerated German rearmament. The Anglo-German Naval Agreement of 18 June 1935 allowed Germany to build a Navy equivalent to 35% of British surface ship tonnage and 45% of British submarine tonnage. Any battleships were to be limited to no more than 35,000 tons. Over the next three years, as Germany's economic crisis worsened, the Nazi party's vote increased, as did the votes going to the communists. Squeezed from left and right, the center parties found themselves unable to form governments without the support of either of the political extremes. Governments lasted only a few months, preventing the implementation of the necessary measures to restore the economy. Germany's democracy was locked into a spiral of economic and political decline. By the middle of 1932, the Nazis were the largest party in the Reichstag. Even though they did not have the necessary majority of seats to allow them to form a government, they held the balance of power, and Hitler was now a key power broker. For six months, Germany was in political turmoil as the aging President Paul von Hindenburg tried to form a government that excluded Hitler. The former field marshal despised Hitler, because of his lowly Austrian birth. In January 1933, Hindenburg bowed to the inevitable and appointed Hitler as Germany's chancellor. Hitler was the leader of a coalition with other right-wing parties, which represented big business interests. Over the next year, Hitler moved systematically to consolidate his grip on power and eventually appointed himself Germany's Führer with unlimited dictatorial powers. The SS played a key role in this move to dictatorship. Once in control of the levers of political power, Hitler moved to put his loyal lieutenants into key positions of influence. Himmler was made police chief in Munich. The SS was also authorized to act as an official police unit alongside established state police forces. Money from the interior ministry budget was diverted to pay for the SS expansion. Now, many of the part-time SS men could become full-time employees of the German state. SS units around the country were established on a permanent basis with battalions or political readiness squads being set up in every major city for so-called heavy police tasks. These were, in effect, paramilitary squads, which owed their loyalty directly to Hitler. The SA organization by the end of 1933 had mushroomed to three million men, and Hitler was looking for ways to bring it under his control. A crucial development was the setting up in Berlin in March 1933 of a new elite grouping within the SS under the command of one of Hitler's old henchmen from Munich. Josef Sepp Dietrich was an old party crony of Hitler, whom he trusted implicitly. The new group was initially only 120 men strong and was dubbed the SS Stabschwach Berlin. Its job was to guard Hitler and his official residence in the Reich Chancellery. In September 1933, it became the SS Liebstandarte Adolf Hitler, or SS Bodyguard Regiment Adolf Hitler. And in November that year, members of this new Life Guard swore an oath of loyalty unto death to their new Führer. Under the leadership of Dietrich, the Liebstandarte 
would later rise to be Germany's premier armored division. However, in its early days, the unit would gain infamy for its role in one of Hitler's first extra-legal acts as he moved to establish his dictatorship. <laughs> 